Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14? I think this is 14. I'm Mysterious JG. Uh, it's been an exciting couple of videos. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I was talking to an online friend about this the other day. I, The fact that every turn is really about uh, 10 days. Because they have months divided into early, mid, and late. Um... If you're microing, like, you know, going through and looking at your cities on every single turn, or making sure you spend every single order, every turn can take a long time. But in fact, not that much time has passed. I've been expanding actually quite aggressively in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and am the biggest force in China by a fairly considerable margin. Um, see, the, the next largest force, not that, not that all of my troops are well positioned to support each other, per se. And I've done kind of a dangerous uh, amount of marching troops and using up food reserves recently. But I've got more than twice as many troops as the next largest force. I've also made enemies of every force in China, more or less. So, um, overall things are going good, but things could certainly turn on us at any time. But yeah, it's uh, what I'm getting at is that it doesn't feel like this game is like moving at a manic pace, but uh, I think I, I think I, uh, Yuan Shu has declared himself emperor before that should have happened in history, right? Because, um, well, it's hard to say with the Zhu Chang being taken by us, it messed up a lot of stuff, but really like Lu Bu should have seized the city from Liu Bei. There's various things should have happened that have not happened. Uh, but I feel like we're possibly early or at least on time with when... Uh, Yuan Shu should have declared himself emperor, but he's he's done it with a much uh, larger and more powerful force than he would have had. I am reading the comments. People are backseat driving a bit, which I've come to expect in the strategy games. I don't mind as long as you're, you know, not really douchey about it. That was the big problem with Panzer General, is that even, even when I was being successful and I won a major victory on every single mission, as I always say, until the very last mission of the game, people constantly criticizing every single thing. You're, you're going to have to just accept that everything might not go exactly the way you would do it. But there's a, another element here, which is that I'm quasi role-playing as Yuan Shu. The smart move at this point would definitely be to finish off Cao Cao. And people have pointed out in the comments, it's not just that he's a threat and needs to be... Like, I had one person, like, said, I skipped to the end of the video and Cao... Like, I don't even know if they watched the video. They just felt the need to come in and tell me I should deal with Cao Cao. I know Cao Cao is still the most threatening AI on the map, and I know that Cao Cao has a lot of really good officers that I should be absorbing into my force. But things are going well enough now that I feel like I can be a little sloppy and get away with it, and I'm role-playing as Yuan Chu. Uh, Liu Biao did something I could perceive as a slight, and I intended to grab one or two of his cities to punish him for it, and things went bigger than I could have imagined. I wasn't expecting to capture and kill Liu Biao. Meanwhile, Lent's unit is uh, giving up. Not being shitty for Lent. Ooh, sorry, I, that was stupid. But, um, yeah, like, killing Liu Biao as an unexpected bonus has just really set history on its head. Not as much as me taking Zhu Chang when I did has, but still. The narrative in my head now is that Liu Bei is starting to attack us. And uh, he attacked us. Maybe I, I wanted to take uh, I wanted to take uh, Jiang Jia, and I wanted to maintain good relationships with Sun Tzu. And my next logical move would have been to finish off Cao Cao, and then roll up Liu Bei and Lu Bu and Kong Rong, and then just gradually secure the central plains. And if I could achieve some kind of equilibrium where, you know, I was powerful enough that Yuan Shao wasn't attacking me constantly, and and necessitating me moving against him. I would probably move west into Chang'an and at least have this whole area here before I started being like, okay, the game is won. In what sequence do I want to finish off the remaining forces? Like, my broad plan would be finish off Cao Cao. Uh, probably can't get rid of Kong Rong. Kong Rong would be nice to wipe out because he's fairly weak, and he's got a decent city, but I mean, probably can't get Kong wrong without getting Liu Bei out of the way first, so it would be 
if I'd really if I'd really pressed this early, I might have been able to take out Tai uh, Quine. I'm probably I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. T A O Q I A N. Whoever this guy is that gives the city to Liu Bei, I might have been able to bulldoze through him and then move on Kong Rong before Liu Bei. But that the, that that is past. I need to deal with these three, and I probably would have taken Cao Cao first. But now I'm kind of role playing as Yuan Shu a bit and responding to excuse me the moves of the AI. And uh, Liu Bei has gotten uh, aggressive against us, and I'd already taken to building arrow towers. Maybe that's why GFP is marching against Shou Chun instead of Guan Ling. Um, but yeah, like now it's it's going to be tough for me unless I can kind of head cannon it. His advisors are kind of handling him and distracting him with shiny objects and doing the smarter move. It's going to be tough to justify not. Uh, trying to attack Liu Bei. Because Liu Bei has attacked me and Yuan Shu is a... Yuan Shu is all about short-sighted, move towards an immediate advantage, don't think of the long term. That's why he declared himself the Emperor. Um, when his advisors tried to warn him that would unify the other warlords against him, even if he was fairly powerful. Uh, he was one of the more powerful warlords in the region, but that, was, that sealed his fate. Um, in this game, I I forced... Oh, I got an alliance with Sun Tzu that he would never have agreed to if I declared myself emperor, and he's being forced to follow it. And, and if the rules were a little looser, like, there are certain things the AI is forced into, like, you know, I think it was like RTK-10. I tried to break an alliance as Shu with uh, Liu Kong and invade his... Like, march my forces into his territory and then break the alliance... And the game basically wouldn't let me. All of my forces, all of my forces were hit with the retreat status ailment. And you know, it was Grimoth was in the comments like, "So shame on you for trying to do what you did." And I was like, "I mean, no shame in it. It, it should have worked. Game rules don't allow it to work, but I thought of it as a neat thing to try." Here, like, yeah, Sun Tzu probably should be able to break his alliance and attack me, but I, I'm almost positive he will not be allowed to do that under the the rules that the AI has to follow. But once this alliance ends, he probably will turn hostile towards me again. That's probably going to happen. In real history, by the way, I was reading about this the other day. Um, the thing about Yuan Shu and what, what he thought was happening, and this is real history more than it is the novel. In the novel, um, Sun Tzu basically gives up the Imperial Seal to get troops, because Sun Tzu is ultimately a much better leader than Yuan Shu is. And uh, he needs the troops because he's a great field commander and he's able to carve out the foundation of what would become the Wu Kingdom. Whereas Yuan Shu is concerned with, you know, a small piece of jade that in his mind symbolizes his authority. And uh, Yuan Shu is a fool. Uh, Yuan Shu is a bit of a fool in real history as well, but the difference was Sun Tzu really was uh, a subordinate of his. And his decision making was based on the idea that Sun Tzu... Like, in the novel, Yuan Shu is, like, he doesn't really want to give Sun Tzu the troops because he, he does kind of vaguely seem to realize Sun Tzu could break off and be independent. But he, it's worth it for the Imperial Seal. In real history, um, I don't know that Sun Tzu ever possesses the Imperial Seal, but he is a general working for Yuan Shu, and he's conquering these forces. And Yuan Shu considers this to be his territory that is under his control when he declares himself emperor. Then Sun Tzu, who as a field general has a lot of power over the troops out here, Sun Tzu turns on him based on the fact that he declares himself emperor, and that's essentially what causes Yuan Shu to collapse. And Sun Tzu is not the only one of Yuan Shu's officers who turns on him. But the way this game works, you've got these different forces with different colors, it gets a little weird. Like, there was a lot of, uh, in this game, the force is called... Uh, Li Jui, but Li Jui and Guo Si were kind of both remnants of Dong Zhuo, who kind of had a lot of internal fighting over who was going to be in charge of the armies that were loyal to, you know, were part of what had been Dong Zhuo's army. In this game, it's it's marked as one force, and there are other games where you'd have a little force called uh, Guo Si and a little force called Li Jui. I know more about how it worked in the novel than in history, but in the novel... You've got these two guys who, 
they work together when it's convenient and they start fighting each other when there's no outside threat and it's a mess but it doesn't translate well into this game where you need to have a force where officers are going to act with a, you know a loyalty score in a range of 1 through 100 with a single unified leader of the force so that stuff doesn't work similarly Sun Tzu will have a force that is not Yuan Shu's force and can turn on him at any time. Whereas in real history, what happens is this would have been like a big chunk of pink. Uh, and then events would have turned it red and like a player wouldn't have seen it, necessarily been able to see it coming. Similar thing in my, my playthrough of RTK 11 all those years ago, my first RTK playthrough. We played as Liu Bei, who was given, I believe, Jin Ye. Um, and we're trying to defend it against constant attacks from Cao Cao, and Liu Biao was an allied force, but he wasn't really directly helping us. That's based on a sequence in the novel where Liu Bei was actually working for Liu Biao, and was charged with defending Jin Ye, but he was a subordinate of Liu Biao, so it really should have all been this, like, sort of turquoise color that is Liu Biao, with Liu Bei as an officer of his, but the game switched it over and made Liu Bei is always green in the Kawaii game. You know what I'm trying to get? I don't know why I'm belaboring this so much, but... Yeah, the reason... In history, the reason Yuan Shu thought he could pull this shit off is a lot of this territory in the Southwest that we don't hold, and that I'm not planning to take over any time in the immediate future. That's where he thought uh, his strength was going to come from. And then that got pulled out from under him, and he collapsed. Uh, we've gone a whole different route, and I'm hoping we're a lot more successful than the historical Yuan Shu was. The most interesting thing that's happening now, though, Liu Bei completely in character we have um by declaring ourselves emperor of zhong we are openly in rebellion against the han liu bei doesn't like cao cao too much because cao cao does cao cao even have the emperor i don't think he does because the events haven't played out the emperor is still i believe being held by uh guo si liu jiwi whoever in this reality but yeah liu bei didn't care for cao cao much because he thought cao cao was kind of using the emperor as a as a puppet and was the one really pulling the strings, which was true. But at least Cao Cao was, you know, paying lip service to loyalty to the Han. Liu Yuan Shu is like the grossest traitor to Liu Bei. So it's completely in character that he would be attacking us now. I think the real reason he's attacking us is because the way the AI works in this game. Uh, we've got a bunch of arrow towers in the way of Guanling, which probably makes it less of an attractive target. But he's got to attack somewhere. He's been pushed to enemies with us by the... Uh, by the events, and Shochun is one of the two cities he could be attacking, and it's the one he's choosing to attack. Cao Cao's not attacking us because the only city that... Like, he can't get to Wan without marching right through the territory surrounding Zhuchang, and Wan... Like, we've got more troops there. It's just a matter of... He's not attacking us because it can't work. Liu Bei, if he marches out of both of his cities, he could, and really would be a major threat to Shochun. It would be a disaster for us if he took Shochun, and it's not out of the question. So, him launching these, like, really shitty attacks? Like, I'm not sure what the AI is thinking here. Um, other than it's maybe trying to set up towers to stop us from marching against them, but it's setting them up on the wrong side of the river. It's setting them on our territory. Uh, somebody also in the comments, um, I think Tollpanzer was asking about building gates over the uh, paths across the river. That's not really how this game works, unless I've missed something. I do not believe we can build gates. It is not Age of Empires. I'm not going to wall them into their areas early and then try to grab the relics so I can get all the gold. That's just not how this is going to work. According to rumors, there's a valuable item show. Okay, so what we need to be doing right now, is, now that I've wasted half of the video, getting myself caught up mentally, we're attacking the arrow tower before it can be finished, and then we are... This is... Uh, Former war chief, uh, Angham Morand. Um, he's not like role playing in the comments or anything, but I do feel like I did him wrong taking him away as war chief because I found out that his like 95 intelligence score was making a much more significant difference than I thought uh, versus being 100. But very capable officer, and I fully expect him to crush Chen Deng if Chen Deng doesn't have the sense to retreat. And honestly, what I'm thinking now, the big thing that I'm, I'm trying to decide is, should we have him march on uh, Zhongli and take Zhongli? Um, or should I have him go right back to Shochun to save food? 
because the issue we're going to have is that we don't have as much food saved up as some of these cities where they just haven't been marching troops as often. Liu Bei has more food saved up in his two cities by far than I've got saved up in, the, in my border cities with him of Shochun and uh, Guanling. Significantly more food. Not like double the food I've got, but he's got significantly more food reserve. Um, and I can't just sh uh, ship all the food out of these other cities because there's going to come a point where the smart play might be to march out of Runan with like a fast paced unit and have it march up and join with slower paced units coming out of the frontline cities uh, to push and take uh, GAP. If I really want to overwhelm them, I'm going to have to march out of several cities and that's going to involve a lot of food. And Zhu Chang, it would be, it'd be really tempting, but I need to, I need to be very careful about marching out of Zhu Chang. Uh, unless I intend to change my plan and do do what's really a smart move would be to move on Chen Liu. I'm going to try to not attack anybody for a while. I'm going to try to be smart and let my food uh, stock rebuild. And my only headcanon is that advisors have, you know, trying to convince Yuan Shu. Once we defeat his forces and drive them back, he is not worth our time. Or, um, you know, we will attack him later in the year or something like that. Anyway, let's get these... Um, People and reward. Okay. JG Mysteries uh, loyalty has uh, slipped, hasn't it? Interesting. Oh, hold on. What is, is JG Mystery back in. Um, JG Mystery is one of the people who doesn't have a title because he wasn't. Um, Because he wasn't uh, home when I was handing out titles, he was on the march. So he could become the negotiator. The West sub officer. Did I have something in particular that I was jokingly going to give him? I probably did and have now forgotten. Senior officer, assistant scribe. Ah, oh, that could be cute. Falger is the scribe. I could make myself an assistant to Falger. Um, the issue, of course, is would I ever have JG on the march? And uh, if so, would I want to give him something that... Uh, I'll give him plus one intelligence, plus one... It's actually the same exact effects as... Uh, I think it's pretty much the same effects as Scribe. How many things do I have with nobody to assign them to? Because I probably want to wait and make... Um, I made shooting your mouth a horse master, didn't I? Bobo is on the march, so but he's already got a title. I could make a. Ah, oh, I'll just make myself a negotiator. That is, if I'm actually available. I guess I could show up as having low loyalty and be on the march. DG Mystery has no title. Okay, that's why. So I'm going to be the negotiator. But we also have Alden and Ma and got a couple of people with no title. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, people with no titles include... Oh, these are... Hold on, I'm doing it wrong. Make someone the negotiator. Current title. You can't get it so that people with no titles uh, appear in a specific sequence? This is stupid. Okay, these people I can't give titles to are already on the march. So I need to hold the titles for these three. Ald, Ma, and Lethal. And then, I don't need a title for you, you're a real officer. Falter's already got a title. I could give him a promotion, or I could just... I didn't realize he had a title, because I was joking around about how he... And Vulture Bobo also already has a title. So really, I need to hold at least three titles, because I've got three of my created officers don't already have a title. Shh. 
and then I don't have a title. I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, God, I'm wasting so much time with this, but who... Okay, I've got more than enough titles. I can afford to give myself a title, and I can afford to be... Is it two 12k titles? Yeah, I'll save... I'll make... I'll make... Uh, I'll make myself... Um, I might give all the negotiator. I'll give... I'll give myself, like, assistant scribe. That'll be cute, because that'll mean I'm working for... Uh, I'm under Falger in the uh, grand scheme of things. Changes have been made to the officer titles in John. Did I do did I do that right at all? Let's see. Information. Officers. Am I now the um Title assistant scribe. So I am the assistant scribe. Did it that increase my loyalty? Am I still not loyal? How do I even check? It, I don't see it here. Eighty-nine. Yeah, I didn't actually become more loyal for being made the assistant scribe. That was why I went through all that nonsense too. All right. Oh boy, I need to do something on this turn. This has been a complete waste of a video. I apologize. All right, GG Mystery, we, we, all the guys who are below 95 need their gold. All right. Is there anybody we need to employ, particularly people in Liu Biao's territory? Liu Yao. He would be worth getting. I implore you to reconsider who you send. Yeah, I got nobody who can ca actually get him, though. Nobody is recommended. I'm assuming nobody's recommended, or else, yeah. I don't know why it would default to her. And I saw him before, Liu Yao, and I wanted to get him, and it wasn't going to happen. Nobody's loyalty is really all that low. Alright. Suggestions. Forty five percent, five hundred gold app though. Need it, but it'd be fun. Banquet, uh. No, that's the Ujui army. I don't care about them. 900 is too much. Uh, and a banquet. Okay, overseer proposals. Investment, investment, investment. I always do investment. Um. Investment. That might just be that you get more control. Well, no, the Ju Chang, all those places have as much control as they're going to get right now. Everything going good here. I feel like I've spent a ton of time. I apologize. Like, every so. Like, when I. The first video of a session, which is what this is, I tend to spend a lot of time just trying to get back into the swing of things. Um, somebody, I forget who explained what the deal is with these um, Reign of Arrow uh, tomes. I, I will be when I get around to really caring about navy and uh, boosting my uh, naval um, 
policies, uh, they will be something I can assign, but I can't assign any of them now. All right, so let's wasted this whole freaking video. Let's just search, search, search. A lot of cities. Get all the people who are not overseers, but we're only who are actually in the city. Uh huh. I did this wrong, didn't I? Mm. Should have done days first, then. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Okay. Anybody who's at one day but is not an overseer. So Feng Shi has actually been doing some good as a searcher. So she's going to find a book. She might find something better. That would be nice. Search the new cities as promptly as possible. Fang Zhao will return with good news. Unless I forbid her from searching. Cao Mao is a recruiter. I should probably be using him for something. What's going on with Jin Ye? Do I have a bunch of people who aren't, uh... Have I got people who haven't been assigned to jobs in Jin Ye who should have jobs? No? Everybody's doing something. I might not have min-maxed, but everybody's doing something. Somebody might be better at this. A recruitment overseer, because... Doesn't Kai Mao have recruit? Oh no, summoner's the one that matters here. Recruit is, makes you good at hiring people. Never mind. Oh boy, this has been a whole non video, hasn't it? Search. It's going to have a lot of officers here now. Oh no, I. I got really confused there about what what I was doing. Pay you on Chow, on Jian. No, you're doing something. It's just the people with nothing under overseer. I, I was grabbing everybody who didn't have a recommended circle. I was really confused. All right. They're very, and this is rarely ever resulting in anything. I, at some point, I probably just need to stop doing this. It's tough to let go, though, guys. They're still in charge of Wanda and Xu Chang. Probably need to consider moving some guys around at some point too. If I'm going to be fighting out of uh, fighting Yuan or Liu Bei soon, I probably need to position my guys for it. He is confident that he will deliver. He's the training overseer. He can't be doing that. He's training overseer. Actually, I probably could use the training overseer. What the hell? Because all they're doing is keeping keeping things topped off at 100. Matter of fact, I think I have the training overseers in every city go do some searches. Because all they are doing is keeping guys keeping their morale at like 100. Is there nobody doing training here? Interesting. I'm making a complete mess of this. I gotta get better at the uh, inputs for this part. Yeah, Zhu Xu, you're great at searching for stuff, right? 
I implore you to reconsider your son. This guy might actually find gold and eat it. <laughs> it's you, you. Do we not have a training overseer here either? I might have just like shut down training at more places than I realized to save money. She does not believe in these people. She does not believe in them any more than she believes in Crystal Light. Genghis Khan will be really good at searching, but he's got other things to do. So... Just sending more and more unqualified guys out to search. Why not? Jin Ye, we will just add the training overseer. That's all we're doing. And you are not recommended, so this is really not going to make a difference. Oh, wow. that. And that burned through most of our orders, thank goodness. Okay. You guys are still on the march. So we'll have you guys taking over these various zones and I'm waiting for these guys are going to take a while to get there. And the main thing to watch is going to be the action up here. Cao Bao is being attacked from behind by the superior powers of Xi Ling. And once that fight is done, we're going to need to start reconquering territory. In the meantime, Agham Morand needs to finish off Chen Dang, who will hopefully be set on fire, and the Arrow Towers. Proposed by Vulture Bean to set fire to Chen Dang unit has failed. Oh. So the arrow towers were completed. So that didn't go as well as I'd hoped. Charge them, crush the enemy. According to rumors of Falwad and Shochun, the Bay Army is army moving for Shochun. We can't just sit back and relax. That is that is correct. Is there a new army moving towards Shochun? No, she's talking about the forces we already know about. So we're gonna win this. I just hope they don't take Dang 2 and uh, really kind of just cause an irritation here. The arrow tower is just barely still alive. So that's irritating. So your new orders are going to be to finish Chen Deng. Because you'll have to take out the arrow towers along the way, I believe. Um, oh, also, people have suggested I go to Port Haiji. I don't know that that's going to work. I think that might lure them to come out and attack. So... This is still being built, so no need to give... Uh, you orders right this minute. Don't want to be swinging right next to, um... Um, Jiangjia. On the yeah, I'd rather just come up here and grab this and then move down. I mean, I'll get it all. Like, I guess there's probably no point, but uh. Low mountains, low mountains. 
I'll have to march through the mountains. I might be in arrow range for a bit, but um, ultimately, when these guys get here, Ald will hopefully be the one doing most of the damage. You know what? No, let's not have Bobo do that. Let's have Bobo just march here with her. For me. So that if they march out of here, they'll be outnumbered. Like, they could march out and then defeat uh, Molly's unit, and that just wouldn't really be particularly good. Meanwhile, we got E-City over there. Those are transport units, so I was starting to wonder about their movements, but they're probably not worth being too concerned about. Nothing is changing on the Chen Liu front. Lu Bu and Cao Cao are fighting each other, I believe. Yeah, if uh, either of them were able to finish off the other, that would make a difference. It's nice for them to be stalemated for now. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do, because this has been such a boring video. I'm going to try to quick do a whole other video. Not, not a video, but a quick... Um, just do a quick uh, turn of all the easy stuff. Tendeng unit. Uh, we just tried that and it didn't work. I'll try that, though, just because I really don't want that unit to get free. Overseer proposals. Oh, I'm burning through money, though. I probably can't be doing these tactics that often. Uh, commerce. Investment I'll do. Otherwise, I think I'll just leave it. Did I get any... Uh, Okay, I did get some new tomes. Disorder and Provoked. I'm just going to let those stack. Um, okay, you overseers. You can search, you can search. They're usually good. They're not rec well. She's usually good. They are not recommended this time. And our training overseer is probably one of the people out on the march. I'll return with good news that I didn't manage to kill myself or set fire to the city. Did you say that seems too much for him? I didn't really notice. We need to move through this faster. Um, it's not a good sign that it shouldn't recommend anyone for this, but... I really do at some point need to sit down and reevaluate my domestics in these cities too, but I just I know how much time each of these turns is taking. Trying to be an exciting LP here, but Simba. At this point it's just a matter of burning through uh orders as best I can. I know, um, oh yeah, um, I think it actually was, um, can't remember your username, the shooting your mouth, um, talking about hex mark, um, because he found a horse and it's hex mark. Um, I had forgotten that, well actually I'm not sure I ever knew that in the novel, hex mark, um, maybe that didn't happen in the novel, maybe that's like one of those legends that's from uh, Three Kingdoms uh, fiction that is outside of the novel, but Hexmark was Liu Bei's uh, horse. I knew that, and I knew that the legend about Hexmark is that it was supposed to be uh, bad luck. Uh, Liu Bei wrote it, and I believe it was the horse that he was riding when he um, 
vaulted over a river to escape from Cao Mao and his his plans to betray Liu Bei uh, when he was an officer of uh, Liu Biao's. But, um... Well, you know what? More on Hexmark next time, because we want to just end this uh, video. We won't end it just yet. We will do a, a turn, so at least we got two turns done, even if they were done at the very, very end of the video. First of all, this... Okay, so I just wasted a thousand gold on those two tactics. They had 40% chance of succeeding, so it's not crazy that they didn't work, but... Roll the dice twice uh, with a slightly less than coin flip, and... Please prioritize checking our current situation. Wait, Cao Bao's unit. Chuko Nu, this is not a fight where we're so outnumbered. Moves of item Shochun. Cao Cao army has their forces marching towards Shochun. Okay, so this isn't good. This is not good at all. We now have uh, Cao Cao and Liu Bei both attacking Shochun. <laughs> all right. Uh, when we come back next time, I'm going to have to figure out to react. And all those people who want me to attack Cao Cao, you might just have gotten your wish. See you guys next time.